All right, we're looking today at Mr. Ridley's RMT revision, and this is number four, wood joints. Wood joints are a methods of joining two pieces of wood together to make a strong joint, simply enough. And there are really two categories, uh, panel joints, that's in thin board, and frame joints. Um, for revision, <clears throat> you need to remember that some of these joints, and you also need to say where they might be used or with the advantages of the joints. Wood joints are a very traditional method of joining wood. There's a picture of a box there from Egyptian tomb using wood joints. They've been developed a long time. There's nothing new in joining wood. Um, so this is the first joint, butt joint, and it's the simplest of all joints. It's really just the two pieces of wood put together. They can be fixed here with nails. They can have a strengthening block, but the two pieces just butt up together and it's really not very strong. It's, it's hardly a joint, really. They're used on corners or partitions. If you used them in a GCSE project, you wouldn't get the, the, the higher mark. A mitre joint. Um, this joint is used on corners. So there, there's the mitre, the angle there. Sometimes used in a mitre box to cut it. It's like a, a, a butt joint. It has a slightly bigger area. The mitres must be cut accurately at 45 degrees. So we use a mitre box. Um, used for picture frames really and it can be used for some boxes it can be tricky to make a rebate joint this is a corner joint where the corner is cut out here and this corner still allows some end grain to, sh to show it can be made with a hammer uh, sorry a mallet and a chisel to make that joint in the school workshop it's something you might use in a project the corner joint uh, this corner joint is a dowel joint Notice the spelling dowel, and the dowels are these round pieces of wood here. There's two dowels here, and this is consisted of drilling a hole and then pushing the dowel in with some glue. So we put glue down here, glue on the dowel, push it in. The dowels are pushed in. Uh, it's simple to make. You can use a jig or a template to drill the holes accurately in both pieces of wood, and it makes a fairly strong joint quite easily. Often used in... in um, knock down furniture as well, IKEA furniture. This is a mortise and tenon joint. It's used for um, furniture, chairs, tables. If you made a chair or a table for your GCSE project you might use this. Um, it can made, be made with a chisel and a mallet or you can use a mortising machine to cut the mortise. The mortise is the, the, the hole there, the tenon is the slot the slot part that's fitting into it. You can see that there quite clearly. Finger joint. This is another interlocking joint. It must be made accurately. It's quite a strong joint, but it needs accuracy. So it requires a higher level of skill than other joints. And that's why we would use it on a box or something like that, because it shows that we can, it's a, it's an area where we can show the skills that we've got um, to cut out accurately and neatly. And it looks good if it's done properly. A halving joint. This is a simple interlocking joint. The name comes from the fact that the wood is divided in half along here and along here and then it's used for furniture and buildings. It could be um, added with screws and glue to make it stronger but basically it's quite a strong joint and it's simple to do. A dovetail joint. This is a very strong joint. The name comes from the shape here, so it's like a finger joint, it's related to a finger joint, but instead to make an additional locking mechanism, this shape here, which is, um, that's where it gets its name from, the shape of a, bird, a pigeon or a dove's tail, and it's used in high quality furniture, so this might be the front of a drawer and the side of a drawer, put together very strong, but very difficult to cut accurately with a chisel, a mallet, a tenon saw. Now we're going to do some a test. So we're just going to go over these again, see if you can remember what we've done. What is the weakest, most simple joint to make? And there's a clue there, but of course it's a butt joint. That's a, and there's a simple way there to strengthen the joint. What is the name of this joint? This is the one where the sum of the grain still shows, but it's stronger than a butt joint. It is a rebate joint. Because there is a stronger, more area to glue, this is a stronger joint. And that's most what most joints do, is just give you more surface area to glue. What is the name of this joint? Now, it's similar to the um, rebate joint. 
It is used in furniture, in bookshelves in particular, and it is a housing joint because the rebate is fully enclosed, so it's often called a housing joint. What is the name of this joint? This is the one that's used in self-assembly furniture. It's a dowel joint. The joint is easy to make, but it does need a jig to drill accurately, and it's often used in flat pack furniture because it can be um, just pushed together and glued and makes a strong joint. This one is a halving joint. And what is the name of this joint? We looked at this joint. This is the one that's used for tables and furniture. It is, you can see it there, a mortise and tenon joint. And it's strongly, it's, it's quite a strong joint for joining two pieces at 90 degrees. And what's this one? We did this one. It's a dovetail joint. And this is um, a, a complex technique only used in fine furniture. So that was joints. And now we'll just have a quick look at glues and adhesives. Glues are what we use to join wood, metal, plastic. So these are some of the glues. Which is the only glue really that you should use in the workshop? You never use a hot glue gun. Never put a hot glue gun. The only thing you're going to use to join wood together really is PVA glue. So it's PVA, it's used for wood, it's very safe, it's non-toxic. It's Even the waterproof glue is not 100% waterproof. That's the only problem with it. If you're putting a boat together or something like that, it's going to be in water all the time and it can be sometimes a problem. But And it takes quite a long time to dry. While it's drying, the wood should be clamped. What are those clamps here called? G-clamps. And there's, there's something there, clamping to be fixed with PVA glue. If you're going to remember one glue, that's the best one to remember. What is this glue? It's a glue that you can is the best glue for using dissimilar materials. If you get an exam question and it says dissimilar materials, i.e. plastic, wood to plastic, uh, metal to wood, then we use araldite, or sometimes called epoxy resin. It's two glues they needed to mix together to work. They will set even under water, so it's totally waterproof, and in fact was developed to um, be a waterproof alternative to PVA. But the problem with it is, it, as I say, it can use most materials, but it can be expensive because it's two small tubes like that, quite expensive. To use glue large areas, it can be expensive. What glue is used for gluing acrylic to acrylic? Now, there's only one glue that's using to acrylic to acrylic. The plastic, PVA won't stick to it. Um, Araldite is will glue it, but the problem is it doesn't sort of bite into the, the, the plastic because it's shiny. So the one we use is tensile cement. The main disadvantage is, is it has toxic fumes, so you need to use it in a well-ventilated area. So if we're using it in the workshop, open the windows, make sure it's well, don't use it in a small room. And also, if you get it on your hands, you need to wash your hands afterwards. It is a solvent, so it melts the plastic together. It's used for gluing plastic, like acrylic, to, to other pieces of acrylic. It takes it, it, it picks up quite quickly, but really 24 hours to dry, and it must be used in a well-ventilated area. The last one, which you may not have seen, is contact adhesive. This is a, another solvent-based glue. It's a rubbery sort of glue, and it, it's applied to both surfaces of thin material. So if you were sticking two thin pieces of plywood together, you put it on both surfaces, you paint it on, you let it dry, push them apart, and it's very, very strong. So here's our th four glues that you need to remember. Tensile cement used on acrylic, Epoxy resin, dissimilar materials, contact adhesive on large flat surfaces, and PVA on wood.